Hello, I am Bennett Smith. And I am Emily Helfer. And in this video, we will be discussing how to use distribution fields to classify functional data. The reason why we care about functional data is because it can be used to represent data in many different fields. Some specific examples of functional data are curves representing people's gaits, which is one-dimensional, or data from CT scans, which is three-dimensional. So what is functional data? Functional data is curves, surfaces, or anything that varies over a continuum. However, since we cannot truly collect continuous data, it is recorded as discreetly sampled observations. Ultimately, our goal is to explore ways to represent and classify functional data. To do this, we represent the data using distribution fields. Distribution fields are matrices where every entry is between 0 and 1 inclusive. For example, given a curve that is discreetly sampled over time, we partition the time space into bins of different amplitudes where 1 would represent the probability of the curve falling into that bin and 0 otherwise. For ease of visualization, we have applied a color mapping to the distribution field, where yellow represents a probability of 1 and blue represents a probability of 0. The distribution field is convolved to spread the probabilities to nearby entries. The reason we do this is to minimize in-class data variability. Going back to our goal, we will use these distribution fields in our classification algorithm. We begin with labeled and unlabeled functional data, which become our training and testing data respectively. For each curve, we generate and convolve distribution fields based on their features. The features that we chose were amplitude, first derivative, and second derivative. For each curve, we then create a combination of the feature distribution fields based on optimal weights. Then we take the combined distribution fields for the training data and calculate the average distribution field for each class. We compare the combined distribution fields for the testing data to the average distribution fields for each class of the training data and assign the label based on the closest distance to the class means. Finally, we assign the labels of the distribution fields to the corresponding unlabeled test curves. Based on experiments we have performed, we have concluded that using distribution fields for classification of functional data can be useful. Further improvements can be made by looking at different optimization techniques, exploring different features of the functional data to represent, and by expanding to multidimensional data.